Batman may be considered by some to be a lone Avenger of the night, but the truth is that Batman has been working with sidekicks and partners for almost his entire career. Introduced just a year and a half after Batman's premiere issue in Detective Comics 27, Robin the Boy Wonder has been an integral part of the Bat Mythos. Standing by the Dark Knight's side, Robin provides a bright contrast and optimism to Batman's brooding nature. Since the original Robin, Dick Grayson, grew up and graduated to his own identity as Nightwing, many other young heroes have donned the iconic red costume. So today, we'll be going through them all, from the tragic to the triumphant, the long-tenured and the short-lived. This is Every Robin Explained. Dick Grayson, the Acrobat the original, and some might argue, the best Robin. Dick Grayson was a young trapeze artist raised in the circus. Richard Grayson lived a dream life with his parents as the high-flying act, the Flying Graysons. That childhood ended in a single tragic moment when his parents' trapeze was tampered with, leaving them to fall to their deaths. The mobster Tony Zuko had cut the line as part of a scheme to pressure the circus to pay protection money. Fortunately for Dick, millionaire Bruce Wayne was in the audience that night. Seeing in the tragic events of that night a painful reflection of his own childhood trauma, Bruce volunteered to watch over Dick. Eventually, he became the boy's legal guardian. Bruce tried to keep his identity as Batman's secret for some time, but eventually Dick discovered the truth and convinced Batman to let him join his crusade. Bruce wanted to help Dick channel the pain and rage they shared so that Dick would not succumb to the darkness and transform into the same kind of tortured soul he had become. Robin proved to be a balance of light to Batman's darkness, keeping him from going over the edge into extreme violence or darkness. But as Dick got older, he chafed under Batman's restrictive directions and clashed against Bruce's brooding and closed-off nature. As part of the Teen Titans, Dick also began to discover his potential as a leader and man out on his own. As he grew in confidence among his peers, it was inevitable that he would eventually part ways with Batman. While the specifics surrounding the end of their partnership have changed over time, the constant has always been a growing gap between Batman's expectations for Robin to follow orders and Dick's growing independence. You can only run around bare-legged for so long. Whatever version of the story, Dick Grayson parted ways with Batman for a while and embraced his role as a leader of the Titans. He took on a new identity, Nightwing. Dick took the name from an old Kryptonian story he had heard from another of his mentors, Superman. Outside of Batman's shadow, Dick Grayson proved himself a capable hero and leader. As Nightwing, Dick spent years with the Titans before returning home following the events of the Nightfall storyline, where the deadly new villain Bane broke Batman's back. Grayson temporarily took up the mantle of Batman after taking it from the mentally unbalanced vigilante known as Azrael. Dick stepped up while Bruce healed, and shortly after, he set out on his own to Gotham's neighboring city, Bloodhaven. As Bloodhaven's protector, Nightwing fought against the crooked police force and the crime kingpin known as Blockbuster. Though Bloodhaven was even more corrupt and hopeless than Gotham, Dick's more optimistic and lighthearted worldview kept him going against impossible odds, helping to bring hope to the downtrodden and clean up corruption. Following the apparent death of Batman in a battle against Darkseid, Dick once again took up the cape and cowl. He partnered with Bruce's newly discovered son Damien, a ten-year-old assassin, to help rein in Damien's deadly urges. Dick proved himself a worthy successor, putting his lifetime of training to use battling familiar and new foes alike with a smirk and level of showmanship that leaned into his years as an acrobat. The original Batman eventually returned, however, and Dick was Nightwing once again. But before we move on, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload, and smash that like button for some plot armor today. Skills and Personality as one of the DC Universe's original heroes and the first of a generation of legacy characters, Dick is one of the most respected and trusted heroes in the DCU. During the ongoing Dark Crisis event, all of the remaining heroes turned to Nightwing for guidance and leadership after the Justice League disappeared. He has been front and center in some of the most world-shaking events and always stands tall as a leader and source of hope. Batman's goal when he took in Dick Grayson was to help the young boy avoid his own fate. In that, Batman succeeded. In many ways, Batman believes Dick has surpassed him and looks upon Nightwing as his greatest success. In Batman's own words, Dick was born to be in the center ring. Nightwing is not just a competent leader, he is a master martial artist who uses his circus training for acrobatic and showy moves. Where Batman is more of a bruiser relying on his fists in a fight, Nightwing relies on his speed and dexterity, and he does it all with a sense of humor and compassion that others look to. Understandably, stepping into Dick Grayson's shoes as Robin would be difficult for anyone, which makes the tragedy of our next Robin so great. Jason Todd, the Street Tough Originally introduced as a copy-and-faced version of Dick Grayson with red hair, Jason Todd's origin was reimagined following the classic Crisis on Infinite Earths event. 
In his new origin story, Jason was a young orphan living on the streets. One night, he made the bold or stupid choice to try and steal the tires off of the Batmobile. Jason ran off, but Batman was amused by Jason's confidence. When he encountered the kid again, he discovered Jason was a member of a gang of petty thieves headed by a criminal known as Ma Gunn, who took in runaways. Jason and Batman teamed up to stop Ma Gunn's crew, and Batman was impressed enough with Jason's fighting spirit that he took the boy under his wing. He hoped to curb Jason's proclivity for crime and violent outbursts and channel them. Unfortunately, Jason proved to be unpredictable. Batman eventually benched Jason after a deadly encounter with a criminal. Batman arrived on the scene of a crime shortly after Robin, just in time to see the man fall to his death. Robin claimed it was an accident, but Batman would never know for sure, and that uncertainty was enough to break his trust. After Jason discovered his mother was still alive, he went on a globe-hopping quest to find her. When he did, Jason discovered that she was being blackmailed by the Joker. Fearing what would happen to her if she were caught by Batman, she handed her son over to the Joker. Sometimes, mother doesn't know best. It was a death sentence. Joker pummeled Robin with a crowbar before leaving him and his mother abandoned in the warehouse with explosives. Batman rushed to try to save the boy, but it was too late. Robin was dead. Jason's death became a defining moment for Batman. He swore off partnering with another Robin and raised a memorial to his greatest failure that stood in the Batcave for many years. Following Jason's death, Batman became darker and more violent, so much so that one young boy knew that something was wrong with Gotham's hero. But we'll get to that later. Jason would return long after his death, revealing himself to be the new violent vigilante named Red Hood. Red Hood took a Punisher-like approach to crime in the city, gunning down mobsters and taking control of parts of the underworld. After a bloody battle where he sliced off Batman's mask and nearly defeated his mentor, Jason revealed his identity. Jason wanted to prove to Batman that his refusal to kill evildoers was not justice, but cowardice. He demanded to know why Batman never killed the Joker. With a gun pointed at the clown's head, Jason passionately pleaded with his old mentor, I forgive you for not saving me. But why? On God's earth, is he still alive? I thought that killing me, that I'd be the last person you'd ever let him hurt. I'm not talking about killing Cobblepot and Scarecrow or Clayface, not Riddler or Dent. I'm talking about him, just him, and doing it because he took me away from you. Skills and Personality Jason was a much different Robin from Dick. Having grown up alone on the streets, Jason was naturally less trustworthy of authority and more cynical. It made it harder for him to follow Batman's orders. While he seemed to enjoy being Robin and was as quick to crack a joke as Dick at times, he gradually developed a mean streak. Jason was particularly sensitive around cases that involved violence against kids. The defining moment of his time as Robin was the questionable scenario of the criminal he claimed fell to his death by accident. Red Hood would spend several years on the outs with Batman, fighting him and the rest of the Bat family out of a twisted need to feel validated. He brutally beat Tim Drake while dressed in his old costume and spent months torturing Dick Grayson in various ways, first impersonating him as Nightwing and then donning a more traditional superhero costume in a mocking reflection of Batman when Dick took over for Bruce. His violent return and his Punisher-like methods kept him away from the Bat family for years, though Bruce always tried to leave the door open for a second chance. Over time, though, Jason slowly found his way back to the path of heroism, and something more in line with Batman's methods. He recently retired his guns, though he warned Batman, I think some people should die. However, he and Batman seem more willing than ever to reach a sense of peace after years of fighting. Despite his return, Jason's death was one of the most important moments in Batman's history, and has had a lasting impact on how Batman approaches crime fighting. Without Jason's death, the third Robin may have never come into the picture. He saw how Batman fell apart after Robin died and felt something had to be done. Tim Drake, the detective. Tim Drake was the nerdy kid made good. He first fell into Batman's orbit when he witnessed the death of the Flying Graysons as a child. Despite that, he became an incredible fan of Dick Grayson's acrobatics, watching recordings of the act and recognizing the unique tricks that only the young trapeze artist could perform. He also witnessed Batman's heroic actions that evening and kept a close eye on Batman's career. Over time, he deduced that Batman and Robin were Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, based on his knowledge of Dick's moves and the timing of Robin's first appearance. After the death of Jason Todd, Tim noticed a change in Batman's methods and took it upon himself to take up the mantle, but he was shut down by Batman. After helping to save Batman on two different occasions, Batman agreed to take Tim on as Robin with an updated and more practical costume. Finally, Robin had pants. Tim's life was different from his predecessors. He had a family of his own, which gave him the complication of hiding his life as a crime fighter from his father and balancing it with school and civilian friends. 
As Robin, he had no shortage of friends either, helping to found the teen superhero team Young Justice alongside Superboy, Impulse, and Wonder Girl. He also encountered a fellow vigilante who went by the name Spoiler, whom he began dating. Things got complicated, though, when Robin refused to reveal his identity, even though he knew Spoilers. We'll get into that soon, though, because Spoiler would go on to have a short-lived career as Robin herself. Tim stood apart from the other Robins thanks to his brilliant mind. Dick and Jason were no dummies, but Tim had a knack for computers and was one of the best detectives in the world. Even Batman believed that Tim would one day be smarter than him. Tim wasn't as naturally gifted an acrobat as Dick or a fighter like Jason, but he was committed to the role and always sought to improve. But Tim would soon go through a period of ongoing tragedies that pulled him into a spiral of depression and isolation. His friends Superboy and Impulse were killed in major crises, his girlfriend Spoiler seemingly died during a Gotham-wide gang war, and his father was murdered by the criminal Captain Boomerang. A year after his father's death, Bruce offered to adopt him, but that ended in tragedy too when even Batman died for a while. Tim's brilliant mind and obsessive personality drove him to spend months trying to clone Superboy. After Batman seemingly died, Tim was the only one who believed Bruce had survived. Isolated from the rest of the Bat family and hurt that Dick Grayson had taken on Damien as Robin, Tim took on the name Red Robin and traveled the world looking for answers. Tim was proven correct when Batman returned from his imprisonment in the Omega Effect, which caused him to jump through time. Don't worry about it, it's complicated. Years later, Tim eventually joined and helped to lead a group of heroes he dubbed the Gotham Knights, which included his ex, Spoiler, former Batgirl Cassandra Cain, Batwoman, and a reformed Clayface. Tim even designed their base of operations, the state-of-the-art watchtower called the Belfry. Recently, with Damian leaving Gotham, Tim has re-established himself as Batman's primary partner and a capable hero on his own. He continues forging his own path forward and discovering more about himself along the way. Recently, Tim realized his attraction to an old schoolmate named Bernard and began a relationship. An exciting new chapter for Tim has begun, and with the spotlight back on him as Batman's primary Robin, the future is wide open. Skills and Personality Though he has a brilliant detective and scientific mind and was trained by some of the greatest fighters on the planet, Tim has never seen himself becoming Batman and has actively fought against the idea. He once told Bruce, You've given me a ton of opportunities and you're an amazing role model. There are a lot of things about you that I aspire to but I don't know that I want to be you. When presented with a potential future version of himself who took on the identity and became an even darker and more violent version, Tim was horrified at one of his greatest fears come true. Because of this, Tim is the most independent Robin, often operating on his own throughout Gotham and working with Young Justice and the Teen Titans. Even so, he admires Batman as a mentor and eventually adoptive father. Tim's greatest strength is his mind, and he's proven himself time and time again to be one of the greatest detectives in the world. He is able to use his deductive reasoning to predict how opponents might move during a fight and develop tactics mid-combat. He's also a computer whiz who has hacked into maximum security facilities and developed proprietary bat computer software. While Tim got into the superhero business out of an inherent sense of right and wrong and not any childhood trauma, over time he has been faced with great losses that have pushed him to the brink. For a time, he isolated himself from his friends and the Bat family. Despite that, he has always viewed Dick Grayson as an older brother, and has had a sibling-like rivalry with his adopted brother Damien. With Damien's arrival, Tim temporarily lost his place as Robin and struggled to find a path for himself. Having reconciled his own self-doubt about his sexuality and identity, Tim is poised to discover his unique path forward as Robin, or perhaps another identity someday. Tim's brilliance and drive for justice make him an outstanding Robin, but when he stepped down for a time, his girlfriend Spoiler stepped in to take his place. Keep watching to find out what caused that change. Stephanie Brown, The Spoiler Stephanie Brown is the daughter of a low-level Batman villain and crook, the Clue Master, a second-rate Riddler wannabe. Ashamed of her father's criminal history, Stephanie donned a purple costume and set out to stop him. She helped Robin take down her father and developed a crush on the boy Wonder, though she was annoyed that Robin knew her identity and she didn't know his. To make matters worse, Batman disapproved of her amateur vigilante efforts and frequently tried to intimidate her into hanging up the cape. Spoiler persevered despite never getting Batman's approval. She eventually gained enough of his trust for him to take a chance on her. When Tim's father discovered his secret, he demanded that Tim step down as Robin. Feeling guilty for lying to his dad, Tim felt like he had no choice but to retire, which left Gotham and Batman without a Robin. Steph stepped up, sewed her own homemade costume, snuck into the Batcave, and demanded Batman make her his partner. Though he historically did not trust Stephanie, Batman believed that if she was going to risk her life anyway, he could keep her close and prepare her properly. Things worked well enough for a time, but after a near-death encounter with the murderer Mr. Zaz, Batman's trust was shaken. 
When she disobeyed a direct command in order to save Batman's life, he fired her and called her untrustworthy in the field. In a misguided attempt to prove herself to Batman, Stephanie, now spoiler once again, orchestrated one of Batman's long-term plans to take down and control the Gotham underworld. Unfortunately, the plan went wrong and erupted into a massive gang war that caused citywide destruction. At the end of the conflict, Stephanie was tortured and presumed killed by the villainous Black Mask. In reality, Stephanie faked her death and spent time recovering in Africa. She later returned to Gotham and eventually took on the role of Batgirl, where she eventually did earn Batman's faith through her tenacity and proven skills. Now, Stephanie shares the name Batgirl with her longtime friend Cassandra Kane, working alongside Barbara Gordon, the original Batgirl. Skills and Personality Stephanie proved herself to be a persistent and motivated hero during her career as Spoiler. Without any training from Batman or even his approval, she was dedicated to making a difference in her community. Though she lacked formal training, her natural smarts and athleticism helped her become a reliable ally to Tim Drake. Stephanie craved Batman's approval, but never really needed it. She believed in herself despite his warnings and forged her own path. No challenge is too big for Stephanie Brown, and she has shown time and again that she will never give up on herself or on doing what she thinks is right. Steph's not the only Robin to have a supervillain parent. The latest Robin does too, but his dad just so happens to be Batman. Damian Wayne, the heir. Damian Wayne is the biological son of Batman and Talia al Ghul, daughter of the supervillain Ra's al Ghul. Believing her son to be a perfect physical specimen because of his heritage, he was trained and indoctrinated to be a master assassin and heir to the League of Shadows. Raised in secret away from his father, Damian was as much a science experiment as a son. Talia made clones of him to hold as potential replacements. Damian arrived in Gotham City with his mother as part of an attempt to take over the city and use Damian to throw Batman off. She left Damian with Batman, where the arrogant and impetuous 10-year-old was desperate to prove to his father that he was more worthy than the current Robin, his adoptive brother, to be his partner. One of Damian's first acts was to sneak attack Tim Drake, knocking him off the model T-Rex in the Batcave and nearly killing him. You know, like brothers do. After being scolded by his father, Damian fled. He ventured out into the city to prove himself. As a sign of his commitment to Batman's war on crime, Damian confronted and decapitated the villain called the Spook and presented the trophy to his father. Though he was dangerous and cruel, he was still just a child, desperate for validation and love. Batman tried to mold the boy toward a less violent worldview in their brief time together, but in a confrontation with Talia, both she and Damian were presumed dead after a massive explosion. Talia was able to save Damian's life through the League of Shadows' advanced sciences and organ harvesting efforts. He eventually returned to Gotham shortly before Batman's apparent death at the hands of Darkseid. After Batman's death, he is taken in by Dick Grayson and Alfred Pennyworth, who work together to try to steer Damian onto the right side of justice. With Dick as a new, more lighthearted version of Batman, and Damian as a dark and violent version of Robin, the new dynamic duo proved to be a fun twist on the usual relationship between the partners. Damian initially didn't respect Dick or believe him worthy of wearing his father's costume. But over time, as Dick showed him compassion and care for the boy and proved his fighting prowess, Damian came to respect Grayson as a role model. The two forged an unbreakable bond and deep love for one another as they fought off twisted villains like Professor Pig and the Flamingo. When Bruce eventually returned, father and son worked together as Batman and Robin for a time. Damian's brief career in life seemed to come to an end in a confrontation with the global criminal organization Leviathan. Damien, having learned the true meaning of heroism and sacrifice after working with Dick and Bruce, gave his life to save the world. Distraught over the loss of another partner and son, Batman went to the ends of the universe to bring Damien back, eventually succeeding. The two worked together as father and son until Damien left Gotham, traumatized by witnessing Bane's murder of Alfred Pennyworth. Skills and Personality Having been raised to lead the greatest clan of assassins in the world, Damien was trained to be a master combatant from the time he was born. He's proven himself as one of the greatest fighters in the world during the deadly Lazarus tournament that pitted him against fighters from all over the world in a contest to the death. Damien claims to be light years ahead of his predecessors in training and ability, and has proven that in raw skill, he is more than a match for each of them. Still, he is prone to arrogance and impulsive decision-making because of his young age, often hiding his insecurities behind big talk. When he was first introduced, Damien was an impetuous, arrogant, snotty little monster. He believed that he was above everyone else and that his physical prowess was unmatched. Underneath all of the bravado and arrogance, though, was a hurt little boy who desperately craved his father's approval. And to get it, he lashed out in all kinds of violent ways, attacking his adopted brother and taking extreme measures to stop criminals. 
Over time, particularly after working with Dick Grayson, Damien learned about his own limitations and the value of working with others. Grayson's guidance helped Damien come to terms with his own emotional shortcomings, and together, the two proved an unstoppable combo. After his father's return, Damien was in many ways a changed person. Though he has always remained overly confident in his own skills and intelligence to the point of underestimating others. Though he is cold and often cruel to others, Damien has an affinity and a soft spot for animals, adopting a zoo of pets including Bat Cow and a demonic creature called Goliath. Damien softened a bit through his friendship with John Kent, the son of Superman. The two young heroes came together as the Super Sons and quickly became best buds. John's more sunny disposition opened Damien up to the joys of being a child and gave him a chance to let loose through wild adventures, including meeting his dashing Bizarro alternate, Rob Zaro. In recent stories, Damien has forged a group of friends among young outcasts and misfits on Lazarus Island. Having given up the iconic colors and Robin costume, Damien seeks his own path, not defined by the legacy of his parents. While these five young heroes are the only ones to officially and canonically use the name Robin, there have been a few other notable versions. In another life, not quite official Robins. We are Robin. During the storyline We Are Robin, a group of teens throughout Gotham took up the name and iconography of Batman's sidekick to fight for their home. While not officially associated with Batman, they helped defend the streets of Gotham. Led by a brilliant young leader named Duke Thomas, these street robins eventually fell apart as they fought amongst themselves and lost members of their own in tragedy. Duke's spirit impressed Batman, however, and he eventually became a new protege for Bruce Wayne. Taking on the name The Signal, Duke donned a yellow costume inspired by the Bat Signal and became Batman's daytime defender. Duke eventually discovered he had metahuman powers that allowed him to control light. Outfitted with custom billy clubs, Signal used his powers and fighting prowess along with his tactical mind to aid Batman. Carrie Kelly, The Spark From the alternate universe of The Dark Knight Returns, Carrie Kelly was a teen girl who took on the costume and identity to help an older Batman who came out of a long retirement following the death of Jason Todd. While Batman originally tried to stop Carrie from her heroics, she kept at it. She created her own Robin costume to try and inspire Batman to step out publicly again. Carrie's spunky attitude and refusal to take no for an answer, just like Stephanie Brown, overcame Batman's disapproval. Carrie proved instrumental in Batman's crusade to save Gotham. While there have been other alternate versions of Robin throughout the multiverse, including Bruce Wayne himself, none remain as essential as those gathered in this video. Let us know your favorite Robin in the comments.